Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to DB2 LUW Performance Myth Buster Part 2. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how increasing the size of the buffer pool will not increase the load utility performance overall. This slide talks about the problem scenario. We want to demonstrate how increasing the buffer pool size does not increase the load utility performance. Uh, we know that the load utility writes data to containers like it it doesn't uh, go through all all the query processing or stuff like that so instead it directly writes to the uh, table space container pages uh, that uh, when, when i learned db2 initially so uh, looking at the advantages of the load utility it, the ability to write data directly to the containers was uh, was always uh, uh, an advantage so that the load utility was performing better than the import utility or other utilities for loading data but what i did not know was uh, it is using direct io for writing those data pages directly to the containers which are nothing but files or devices in the hard disk so they are not using buffer pools uh, for the write operation and they are doing the asynchronous data writes like they are not doing the asynchronous data writes so instead they are preferring the load utility is preferring uh, direct io so so what happens eventually is the data write operation is becoming hard disk or io bound process so if you do for some query processing right like you can see that there will be a lot of asynchronous data writes see because uh, the data will be moved from the container to the buffer pool and the modifications will be done in the buffer pool and the buffer pool uh, aging uh, or the, the page algorithm or uh, there is a buffer pool page cleaning uh, th these will be uh, taking this uh, modified page to the hard disk uh, during a lean period of time right so it not be a, it need not be a synchronous io like what we call as direct io <coughs> So it will be an asynchronous I/O. That is the whole, uh, whole uh, advantage of using the buffer pool. But the load utility is just bypassing the buffer pool for its r data write operations. So, and also the load utility has another portion also, which is the data read from the input file or the input source, which could be a pipe or cursor like that. That one will be a CPU bound process. So, in this tutorial, what I'm trying to say is. Just by, if somebody says, see the load utility is, is loading this much amount of data in so much amount of time. So if you want to increase the performance of the load utility, let us, let us give more number of buffer pool pages. That argument doesn't hold water because for, for the data write portion of the uh, load utility, it is trying to push the data to the disk. It is doing direct IO. So you are eventually you are going to find if you monitor your hard disk, uh, there is a lot of uh, IO requests that will be coming to the hard disk and the hard disk uh, uh, will be like, you know, a lot of requests will be served from that hard disk. So if, if some other table space or containers uh, are also available in that same hard disk, then you are going to reach the IO saturation uh, eventually. Okay. So, so when you load data, uh, so make sure that uh, you, you load data into containers, uh, like more than one container. The table space should be uh, consisting of two or three container files individually in various hard disks. Then uh, that there can be some amount of parallelization which will be utilized by the load utility. That way you can improve the performance. Not by adding more buffer pool pages because there's no point in adding buffer pool pages because it doesn't do asynchronous data right at all. So, so that is the uh, tip that I want to uh, provide here. And as uh, with any, uh, this is the, f the last line is going to be a disclaimer, like there's no general solution for performance. There's going to be only specific case. You need to deal with case by case basis. Okay. So as usual, let us go to the example here. Uh, so I am connecting to the database and let me just first connect to the database. I already have created the buffer pool. So, okay. Already the buffer pool BP data with size 500 is there. And already the table space uh, is also there using that same buffer pool. <clears throat> so there is a table that we need to create staff. Okay. So let me just create that table staff. Um, okay. I <clears throat> okay, sorry about that. Mm. 
okay the table staff is created now i'm going to load data into this table okay <clears throat> so before loading this uh, thing so i just wanted to show you in another terminal i'll update the buffer pool switch to on okay so i go to another terminal this is for monitoring purpose okay and after that i'm going to run this command so i'm going to give that buffer pool uh, entry here okay oops okay it is incorrect so i have to say okay yeah so you can see that the bb data is 500 pages and currently nothing no activity is going on okay so i'm going to hit this load utility and you can see here see here the direct writes there will be like a huge huge so there is no so you can see that there is no asynchronous data writes at all happening right everything is direct writes direct write request and direct write time so the load utility will be uh, if the if you are if you are running a slower hard disk then your bottleneck could be the load utilities performance can be impacted by the io saturation right so so that is what I, I i am trying to say in this video tutorial so it is not at all using the buffer pool right for for this data write portion i don't know why they did not do that do like that so uh, <clears throat> maybe a little bit of performance can be improved right but i'm not sure so whether this is by design or uh, or it is a known issue or defect i don't know but i i think so but this is how it is behaving um, and i think it is this is how it is designed also so it is using direct writes a lot of direct writes actually so you can see about 150000 direct write operation has uh, occurred right so uh, let's do one more thing okay so i just temporarily cancel this i i will increase the buffer pool okay so i am increasing it to 10000 like that okay <clears throat> sorry about my uh, okay uh alter buffer pool so now the size is now 10000 right which is like 20 times right so i'll i'll run the same uh, load command again and I'll run the same buffer pool command here. So it will it will reach 300,000. See, it started with 150,000. So I think it is going to reach 300,000. Again, no asynchronous data writes. And I'm inserting data, okay? And even if you replace data also, I think it is, it is the same way only. It works the same way only. I don't find any difference out there. So adding of the buffer pool pages, so you can see that 10,000. So earlier it was 500. Now it is 10,000. We have given 10,000. Yeah. So 300,000. I think it should have got completed. So, so what I'm, so in this tip, what I'm saying is the load utility has a read portion and a write portion. The read portion is a CPU bound portion. The write portion is a hard disk or IO bound uh, portion. So concentrate on, uh, like do not concentrate on increasing the buffer pool pages because I, I don't think so it is getting used in a, you are not going to get some improvement by by adding more buffer pool pages if you want to tune the load uh, performance, okay? So that is the tip. Hope this tip was useful to you. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, uh, youtube.com slash tb 2 luwacademy See you in the next video tutorial. Until then, bye-bye.